This is episode 67 of a series where we examine the cut content, design, and development of Fault New Vegas. There's a cut perk named Pip Hacker. Only its perk entry point remains internally, and because of this its intended effect is completely unknown. Perhaps it would have given you some buff to hacking, like the ability to remotely access terminals via the Pip Boy, but we can only speculate given so little information. Back in the episode on Freeside, we talked about how it was originally one massive area before it was split into two smaller sections. The alley beside the Old Mormon Ford in the Wasteland world space is internally named Deadbeat Alley. This is interesting because that name is never mentioned in dialogue, and is only written a single time in a place that most players will never see. Francine Garrett does refer to some of the NPCs you recover debts from as deadbeats, which might be a reference to this lost location name. Just get the cabs from them. After that, I couldn't care less what happens to those deadbeats. There's an unused hard-coded setting in the core game called Stinger LOD. The Stinger prefix initially made me think of the naming convention of some music tracks, like the song that plays after exiting Doc Mitchell's house, which is called Good Spring Stinger. However, Stinger has multiple meanings, and in film it refers to a post credit scene. Its exact purpose is unknown, but it seems to be related to Apocalypse LOD, which was used in Fallout 3 for the explosion at Megaton. It's plausible this unused function was intended for the post-game state, or perhaps an event on the scale of the Megaton explosion that was eventually scrapped, but its true purpose will likely always remain a mystery. In a post, Josh Sawyer talked about the possibility of armor mods in FNV. Frank Kowalkowski and I talked about it early on, but we knew there wouldn't be time to implement it. Fallout 4 would later make great use of armor mods, and it's a shame Obsidian didn't have time to add them to New Vegas. There's an unused idle animation where NPCs who had rifles would crouch down and survey their surroundings. It's set up for some NPCs, but they never use it for whatever reason. Thankfully, this can be restored via a mod by Kavach count, and there's a link to that below in the description. There's a scorpion spawn placed underground at Yangtze Memorial, which is the cause of quite a few bugs in the area. It was likely overlooked because it's a random chance spawn. In the making of documentary, the dev team spoke about the way gunshots were intended to echo off of the environment, based on the settings of the location's acoustic space. What we do is we take the Fallout 3 weapon assets and we have repurposed them so that they sound a little more like they're in the environment of Fallout New Vegas. So you hear the rapport of the sound bouncing off of the different spaces and in the mountains in the background and all that. This system makes a gunshot inside a hallway sound much different than one fired in a large cave chamber. In the same way, walking on a stone floor varies greatly from taking a stroll in a sewer. However, a PC-specific setting disables the effect because it causes massive lag and negatively affects the sound of dialogue. Just give me some goddamn medics and fuck off, will ya? You might be surprised to learn this audio system is completely functional in the 360 release, however. This is because the 360 has a dedicated sound card, unlike most PCs since Windows Vista was released. This effect has to be handled via software on the PC, causing massive lag and other issues, forcing the developers to cut it out. Here's a few examples of how much the sound of jumping, walking, and shooting a shotgun could differ depending on the setting, resulting in much more immersive environments. This is yet another example of how unless you're playing with mods, the 360 version is the definitive port of the game. 12 gauge shells have more ammo types than any other weapon in the game, but to me the most iconic variant is coin shot. There's just something special about blasting Legion soldiers using their own money. In a post, Josh Sawyer revealed the inspiration for the ammo type. 
It's really just a ripoff of old western legends about putting shells full of dimes and shotguns. When I was writing Chief Anlin, I went back and watched some early Chris Christopherson films since he was going to be playing the role. One of the first I watched was a Peckinpah film called Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. There's a scene in it where an overzealous guard threatens Billy, played by Christofferson, with a double-barreled shotgun filled with dime shot. Naturally, Billy eventually blows the guard away with the weapon. There's a slow-motion shot of all the dimes flying out of the barrels. Mass destruction ensues. I read the comprehensive report on poor dime penetration at theboxoftruth.com, but decided to create Coinshot anyway. It's mostly included for novelty slash flavor value. Fun trivia. Historical denarii were about the right size to fit into a 12-gauge shotgun bore, though they probably wouldn't fit inside of a shell. Some of these changes, particularly the reverb effect on PC, armor mods, and potentially the Apocalypse LOD system, would have made New Vegas into an even better game. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.